Kentucky Governor Steve Bashir has issued an executive order restoring voting rights to convicted felons who served their full prison sentences. The order restores voting rights to felons that have committed nonviolent or non-sexual related crimes and have paid any court order restitution they are responsible for. Upon their release, not only will felons have their voting rights restored, but they also will be eligible to hold public office throughout the state of Kentucky as well. According to the office of Governor Bashir, the order will restore voting rights to approximately 100,000 former felons in the state of Kentucky. A Tarrant County grand jury indicted two detention officers in the death of 42-year-old Jonathan Paul of Arlington, Texas. 33-year-old Pedro Medina and 57-year-old Stephen Schmidt are each charged with criminally negligent homicide in Paul's death. He was arrested March 9th in his apartment complex during a disturbance call. While in jail, he was agitated, pepper sprayed, and physically restrained by six officers as they moved him into an isolation cell. He was left alone and later found unresponsive. He died in a hospital four days later. Other officers may appear in court in the coming weeks as the investigation continues. And folks, this is, this is very rare for a grand jury to, to indict two detention officers. Right. A absolutely, uh, but you can see from the video that these five or six officers, but the two were the lead, uh, clearly there wasn't any danger. Clearly this, uh, it, this prisoner was uh, uh, in some type of distress. But again, here it is with the police and detention officers, Roland, who aren't thinking about balancing their judgment and whether the health and safety of the prisoner, all they're thinking about is uh, suppressing, depressing, and getting their job done. And there's got to be a balance on that. Well, again, this is what happens when you put the pressure to make sure those folks get indicted. Absolutely. In Baltimore, jury selection for the high profile Freddie, Gay, Freddie Gray case is slated to begin on Monday. Officer William G. Porter will be the first one to head to court for his actions in Gray's arrest on April 12th. Gray died from fatal injuries received in the back of a police van after his arrest. The jurors for the trial will remain anonymous, but would not be sequestered in a hotel room and blocked from interacting with family members and others during the proceedings. Judge Barry Williams, who would preside over the case, rejected the argument by Porter's attorney to move the trial out of the city. The defense attorneys argue that jurors who say they can be fair during the court's initial vetting process could be swayed later by social media and public opinion. And folks, Tamir Rice's family wants the prosecutor on their son's case replaced. A year ago, 12-year-old Tamir was shot and killed by 26-year-old Cleveland police officer Timothy Lowman. The Rice family is frustrated with Cuyahoga County Prosecutor Tim McGinty's slow progress in the case and disparaging remarks that he's made. On Monday, a group of organizers stepped up and presented more than 100,000 signatures demanding McGinty be replaced with an independent prosecutor. Attorney General Mike DeWine doesn't comply by today. The group will call for the recall of both McGinty and DeWine. Folks, uh, bottom line is, I think they're right. This, this DA has been awful throughout this whole trial, this whole case. This DA has has absolutely no idea what to do with this. This He's hoping that it will go away. He is hoping that a year later, the death of a 12-year-old boy is not going to be a part of it. But I'm really happy for the protests that continue. Paris. He's betraying the trust of the people. And that cannot be the case when you have uh, a politician that needs to have the support of the, of the community. And when you don't have the support of the community, this is what happens. So he has a, a job to do and he's not doing Especially it. Especially with the DA even saying the family's making a money grab. I mean, right. and from a DA, really? Right. The person who was killed? Yeah, those statements are outrageous. Absolutely crazy. Now, for, Pharrell, Pennsylvania's newly sworn in police chief, Thomas Burke, is preparing to make a public apology after a private email in which he used a racial slur was made public. Burke sent the email to a dozen friends and colleagues in preparation for a book drive fundraiser he said, please click in review. Even one dollar would be greatly appreciated. Uh, them uh, sharing niggas got to learn how to read. That's what he put in the email. When asked about the email, Berg said he does not, he does use the N word every often because that's just the way that it is here in our area. Well, he was uh, honest. Well, uh, <laughs> you know Social what? media. You know what? <laughs> you can use the N word between you and your friends. Mm -hmm. Why the daylights would you put it in writing? Why in the day where everything is shared, everything right. is forwarded, you obviously don't even think this is an insulting word. You're a sheriff. Well, again, here's the thing, but the beauty of email, now we know how you really, really feel. Now we right. know how you but feel. But the bigger thing is he doesn't care. Right. Because <laughs> he admitted yeah. does not care. Email. He's going to apologize, right. but he still don't care. Uh, you know, that's what I say. Coming up, folks, an update from Oklahoma City after day 13 of the Daniel Hostclaw trial. You know, the one mainstream media keeps ignoring. Also, two suspects arrested in the shooting of five Black Lives Matter protesters in Minneapolis. We'll talk to the local NAACP president. Plus, jazz and R&B legend Ronnie Laws is here to talk about...
There's new music and much more right here on News One Now on TV One.